Thank you, Chairman. It's well known what happened to different systems through the menopausal transition and after menopause, but it's very interesting to uh, focus our attention on unigenital atrophy in part, or more in general to the pelvic floor disease during menopausal transition because menopause is a major risk factor for the development of a pelvic floor disorder and the symptoms and severity of this disorder increase significantly after the menopause. Not only from a vulvovaginal atrophy point of view, because we know that the loss of estrogen uh, in, is a characteristic of the vulvovaginal atrophy, but in general it is interesting to underline that the, after the menopause, but also during menopausal transition, a structural change of the pelvic floor is uh, evident, in particular uh, including the collagen and the hyalinization. Concerning the elastin, the epithelium thickness, the halteret function, for example, of muscle of the pelvis, the blood vessel, or the, concerning the introital connective tissue, all these changes could um, improve um, symptoms, but above all, uh, give uh, the, some change of the uh, anatomic, uh, from an anatomic point of view, to genital tract. For example, the regression of the labia, the retraction of the introitus, the loss of elasticity of the hymen, the prominent and vulnerable retal meatus. Moreover, during and across the menopausal transition, there is a reduced vaginal blood flow, diminished lubrication, decreased flexibility and elasticity of tissue, and there is an increase of vaginal pH. We can resume all these kinds of symptoms and change, uh, anatomical change, in a new terminology, in particular in a new term, which is the genital urinary syndrome of the menopause. The genital urinary syndrome of the menopause is defined as the escalation of symptoms and signs associated with the decrease in estrogen and other sex steroids involving change to the labia maiora, minora, clitoris, vestibule, introitus, vagina, urethra, and the bladder. And if we analyze what happened to the bladder during menopausal transition, we must underline that uh, um, the trigon, the epithelium, the periurethral tissue uh, express uh, estrogen and progesterone receptor and are very sensitive to loss of the estrogen. So after menopause, there is an increase of uh, uninhibited detrusor contraction, leading often to a urge and frequency symptoms. Sometimes, if the retro pressure is low, in this case, patients have not only urge, but also urge incontinence. Concerning what happened to the, uh, in the case of the stress urinary incontinence, we know that uh, the stress urinary incontinence is uh, due uh, often to an hypermobility of the urethra, but is worse and is characterized from a um, bad uh, outcome if uh, the loss of estrogen determines a small thickness of the epithelium or periurethral epithelium, a um, thickness and expression of periurethral vessels, and so the loss of estrogen impact also in the estriotogenesis of stress urinary incontinence, not only a problem of anatomical support. And it's very interesting to underline in general, like the new theories induce us to, uh, to categorize the pelvic floor dysfunction in two categories. The first one is due to hypotonic disorder, which are such as a stress urinary incontinence, the pelvic organ prolapse, and fecal incontinence. And the other, the hypertonic disorder, the overactive bladder, the bladder pain syndrome, interstitial cystitis, the chronic pelvic pain, vulvogenia, overactive bowel, and sexual dysfunction. All the second categories, all the uh, pelvic floor dysfunction were linked to an hypertonic disorder, are 
have in common the um, symptoms of pain, which are one of the most bothersome symptoms uh, in uh, postmenopausal women who claim uh, pelvic floor disorder and symptoms. For example, the myofascial pain. But pain is present also in the recurrent uh, urinary tract infection, or for example, in the bladder pain syndrome, which is characterized by dysuria, urethral syndrome, trigonitis, and cystitis. Also, chronic form of this kind of uh, disease. And a sexual disorder, which is characterized by discomfort, sexual pain, and impairment of self-action. In particular, the pain is present in uh, all the field of sexual dysfunction. For example, the desire disorder, the fear to leak urine during an uh, encounter or anticipatory answer, decreased estrogen and androgens, sex drive decrease, the harassal disorder, the orgasmic disorder, and in general, the chronic pelvic pain due to the sexual dysfunction. And it's very interesting to underline the concept that the pelvic floor dysfunction, for example, the bladder dysfunction, is due not only from a structural point of view to the loss of the estrogen, but also from, uh, because of an impairment of a neuromodulatory pathway and mechanism of action. In fact, uh, we can see that uh, the underperfusion of the frontal lobes of the cerebral cortex and the reduction in the number of nevrohexin in the trusal muscle could worsen the bladder dysfunction. And uh, often, aged women can, uh, in, can disclaim the reduced sensation of bladder feeling and uh, can have a difficult conduct, for example, for an elevated fluid intake and frequent voiding. During the menopausal transition and after menopause, also dysfunctional bowel disorders are frequent. The most important are the constipation, the fecal infection, and the fecal incontinence, which are characterized by lower unresting and squeezed pressure, reduced rectal compliance, reduced rectal sensation, perianal laxity, and changing the morphology of the myenteric plexus. Often, all these kinds of disorders are worsened by the immobility the use of constipation drugs or neurologic disorder. But one of the most important chapters concerning the health of the aged women is uh, certainly the pelvic organ prolapse. In particular, the high degree of pelvic organ prolapse, for example, a three fourth degree of apical prolapse, which are symptomatic and must be cured um, often. Uh, with the surgery for offer to the women the um, best quality of life. In conclusion, clinicians with an understanding of the impact of enopause and hedging on the pelvic floor and lower urinary and gastrointestinal tract anatomy and function and a complex interplay of the other comorbidities will be more fit to investigate, diagnose, and treat appropriately pelvic floor dysfunction in women. Thank you.